the French celebrate Bastille Day on July 14th. But North Carolinians have a good reason to celebrate on the same date. And joining us to explain why is Becky Gray. She is Senior Vice President of the John Locke Foundation. And Becky, this has to do with a little piece of the state budget from 2016. You follow the General Assembly very closely. Is there much that you remember from what came out of the budget in 2016? Well, the one thing that I remember is they put a provision in there that the budget would automatically continue if they had not reached a budget agreement by the end of the fiscal year. And, you know, noted it at the time. I thought it was a good idea. Didn't realize until later when the governor was vetoing budgets and we were going back and forth and trying to work things out. And meanwhile, needs were arising. Schools were trying to get back on track. Local Local governments were trying to put their budgets together. Didn't realize really how significant it was until we were put in that position where we really didn't have a budget at the end of the fiscal year and we didn't have to rely on continuing resolutions as we had seen in past years. What we're talking about is Section 6.3A of the North Carolina Budget Act from 2016. It was just two pages out of a 209 page bill. As you noted, uh, people saw it at the time. There were a few comments here and there. We really didn't know until several years later just how important it could be. But for people who are fiscal conservatives and like to see good stewardship of money, this has really turned into a blessing. It, It certainly has because what we saw as Governor Cooper became the governor and just for you know quick note Mitch Governor Cooper has vetoed every single budget that has been put in front of him by the General Assembly so what you have with this again it goes not just to being a fiscal conservative but I believe being fiscally responsible with the funds and the operation of state government when you don't have a budget in place there are a lot of needs that just they the bills can't be paid the money may be there the money may very well be in the bank but there's not the budget and the process in place in order to implement the many expenses that the state has. And this goes everything from, I mentioned earlier, about local governments, about schools going into effect, that local governments are dependent in large part by appropriations from the state in order to get things up and running. There's also a lot of federal money that comes into North Carolina that is dependent upon some state matches. And so whether it's health and human services, whether it's environmental issues, I mean, you know, transportation, um, having that money in place for those matches, the matching funds from the state is critical in drawing down that federal money. So to have this in place where if there is not a budget in place by the end of the fiscal year, we just revert to the current year's spending, period. Very simple. Things go on, and we have found that when there has been this impasse with Governor Cooper vetoing the budget, Democrats unwilling or unable to override his veto, partnering with Republicans, you know, this has been able to to make sure that our budget and that our state continues to 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 pay their bills and to provide the things that have been designated at least in last year's budget for whatever the current year's expenses may be. For folks who don't follow this process very closely, what we had before 2016 was every two years the General Assembly had to pass a budget. If there was no new budget at the time that the old two-year budget uh, expired, there was the threat of a possible, at least partial, government shutdown. And so sometimes you saw some brinksmanship and people saying, well, you know, I want this and you're going you're gonna to agree with me or else we're going to have a shutdown. We don't have that anymore. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed with this is that the people who want to spend a lot more money don't have a lot of leverage anymore to say, well, you better agree to this or the government's going to shut down. Exactly. And so, yeah, it's, it's kind of relieved that safety net, if you will, sort of let the pressure out of it. Because as you mentioned, what we had before, I mean, there have been years that there has not been a budget in place. I've, I don't mean to suggest that under Governor Cooper's governorship that this is the only time that it's occurred. Um, but in what fact, we've it was seen frequent that there was not a budget on July 1st. Right, and so then what the General Assembly did is they passed a continuing resolution that would, again, continue this spending. 
under certain circumstances. And so a lot of times, as you mentioned, there was wheeling and dealing associated with that continuing resolution. Sometimes that was held up. Some In, in some cases, there were a series of continuing resolutions that had to be passed. You know, for, for two weeks while they worked things out, things weren't worked out. So it would be they'd pass another one for another two weeks or a month or whatever. Um, and it really um, kind of clogged up the system uncertainty there was wheeling and dealing that occurred during the continuing resolution that might have had real impacts on the budget but wasn't discussed in the context of the budget and the process that the budget went through so getting rid of that and putting this provision in place where no budget no problem we just continue on last year's spending plan and things will go on until there's a resolution or as we've seen in the past couple years or until not and we just revert back to last year's spending and as you mentioned for conservatives for conservative fiscal conservatives um that suits us fine one thing that we've seen that has happened in addition to the impasse between governor cooper and the republican-led general assembly is that with the time of covid 19 and a lot of governments worried about where their finances are because we haven't had the new spending associated with a newly passed budget north carolina has had a lot of revenue to work with exactly and and hadn't that been great during this emergency that we've had and you know mitch i would argue too that even with that even with not having a budget and having that restrained spending that we've just been able to to add to our savings account we've done fine we've been able to fulfill the core functions of government without that additional spending so you know there's kind of an underlying message here and i think something to give budget writers something to think about you know how much more spending do we need over last year's spending what are those core functions that we need to expand or we need to spend more money with so i think you know it's also been um, a lesson in fiscal restraint and fiscal responsibility and looking at the budget in such a way of how much more do we need in order to function well this July 14th marks the five-year anniversary of the passage of this provision, originally known as Section 6.3A of the 2016 State Budget Act. Uh, probably a good reason to celebrate, as we talked about with Becky Gray. She is the Senior Vice President of the John Locke Foundation. Thanks so much. Thank you.